All right. Back. Sure. So I've also been told that the mic is cutting out. So I can turn it off, but I thought we'd leave it on just in case we get in the video. Um, but again, if it's Talking about essentially our last hurrah algorithms. We've talked about iterative um, insertion sort, and this week in lab, you guys are going to look at a couple of uh, other iterative sorting algorithms. Um, but in contrast with the both these one approaches the array. The other one sorts the array as it divides it into smaller arrays. These two algorithms also have very different performance characteristics. First, we're going to talk about something we introduced last time, which is called. And then at the end of lecture, we'll see how far we get. But we're going to talk about something called quick sorting algorithm. Now, they all have. They all have. Sort. We're going to see a today. Quick sort has some obvious advantages, but it also has some, uh, pathological cases to perform very poorly. It, and it's sort of like where we are, you know, in terms of through, through sorting different ways to sort things. This is kind of the you know, the, the best resource. Not. And that's about them. I mean, some of these are just kind of bad. Uh, Uh, that, that sort of is an algorithm. It actually has uh, terrible performance, uh, something else you guys might get a chance to think about a lab today. So where we left off on Friday, pointed out so we implemented two sort of arrays, merged them in single sorted sorting algorithm. Uh, we pointed out that the nice thing about merge is that um, the case best performance of this is one way to take two sorted and sorted list. Any list. We had this question of how to use this to create an actual sorting algorithm. So merge two sorted arrays. Yeah. That's our goal. When we talk about sorting, sort, oh, in our case, together isn't sufficient. I have to figure out where those sorted arrays are going to come from. Back into this interesting, you know, uh, point that arrays are something that we can do recursion on. Arrays have this self sim a similar first half of it, second half of it, or the first element and the second length. So I've made the problem. I still can operate on these arrays. And if I keep doing this, I can essentially make them smaller, smaller, smaller to array one. My recursion, breaking it, 
to the size 4, and then to the size 2, and then to 8 of size is about this. Um, so just like when we recurse on, you know, when we recurse on a the way to make problems. And that explains some performance. So I'm going to take my into two subarrays. The smallest sum problem. Okay, so now I know that I can take an array, break it into smaller and smaller pieces, and eventually. I use sorting algorithm. Do that. Point is, feed into my merge. Smaller arrays that are sorted, feed them into my merge function. I can an array that's also. What I end up with are tiny arrays of one. Those arrays are sorted. So if I start with arrays of size one, two, now I have a sort array. And now I take arrays of size two and I merge an array of size I still have a sort of array. Now I take two arrays of size four and merge them together to get an array of size eight. Ray recursion, eventually, what happens with merge sort is I get an array. And if I sort sorted arrays, I use them with this function to build larger sorted arrays. So this is what we're going to do. Our case, recursive algorithm, we're going to identify the base case, the recursive step, and everything else. So the name, same way we would do when we would do tree recursion. Our base case is, I've reached just one back. Sometimes, depending on how an empty so with one element or no, that array thing to do. My recursive step is I try to split the array roughly equal pieces, and this is important. I come back and talk about this is important later. Technically, merge sort can where, but in order to get a Want for merge sort, and I'll show you the performance. How do I combine the results? I merge them. I've got the merge function that we implemented last time together. I can use that to take the result from So I've got all the ingredients I need here. My recursive algorithm. I have a I have a way to make and to combine the results. The thing we need to, to do here that we're going to use to help us is a helper function from the arrays class. So this is part of the library. Uh, this is available for you to use. Loads of this. Range like an array into another array. It me a new array that has the elements. Is a helper function. Now, a problem which is arrays often and so normally we don't allow you to use arrays when you're working on sorting problem. Because you did well, There we go. Right. Uh, would make our sort of the homework problems that you guys would So when we sort a uh, problem, you'll see how we solve this particular issue. But for now, we're going to do it. So, so I've got my Right. 
a new array. This bigger array. cases I need to. Have. One case is that these are either one of the the values in the first array are in the second array, and so I end up copying everything out of the first. Now it's empty. So the non. The other case is that the two arrays are not empty, and there what I do. Is I compare the items at the beginning of these two arrays, and I choose, in this case, whatever one is smaller. All right, so again, this, uh, we approach the problem pretty much the same, a little bit different, but, but should be uh, something that you can understand. Pretty much, we are so close to being done. Remember how beautiful our recursive tree algorithms were? Uh, here, all the mess is in this merge function. It's not complicated, it's sort of ugly and long. Right? Once we're down to actually doing merge sort, this is going to be simple. What, what am I gonna do recursive function? The first thing I always do function Right, I want to, okay, so what's my the function argument, which is an array, yeah? Yeah, that's one or zero. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm done, and if it has size one, I'm done. with the but that out of the so I'm handling half of the array half the an array as its second of the array. Sort on that. I also want to call Okay, what do I, very close. One last thing, I need to combine I've got a sorted array that was returned by the second call to merge sort on line 31. What
Look at that. That's it's my work. All the complex function, right? So let's ponder this. Uh, maybe print off a. Um, so I'll put system data out to println, and then we'll say current size is input array dot length. Right, so you can see here what's happening, right? So I and then I start working. At that, done with the. The second of my original size, and I do the same thing. When I'm done, I've called, and and the other thing. But I think that we can still, now it's going to be bad about that. Okay, I hit you. So we, the number of these. So let's see here. We have one, two, three. Now these two are not going to be merged, right? The size one, right? So if I go, let's move this print line down here. No. All right, so I see that I've called merge one, two, three, four, five, seven times. To merge two arrays of size one together. And I ended up. To merge of arrays of size. Ice. Two arrays two together, size four, then I put it once together to get an array of size eight. So you can see kind of how this is working. I break things down into small pieces and I'm reassembling them. So we go on. Yes, exactly. Uh, merge is doing work. Sports. Five lines. One of them is a, is a. So the question is, what's doing the work here, right? The the work is done by my merge function. But merge can't merge arrays together that aren't sorted, and so the critical part here is that my recursion is going to break things until I can start. I'm getting an array that's twice as big as the array I started with. So essentially, every time I call merge, I'm going from you know race of size two to race of size four and race of size eight, race of size sixteen, and the amount of problems is mean, getting larger and larger. And that's a feature of, of this particular algorithm, which we're going to go over in detail in a sec. Other questions about this? So let's talk. Uh, sort an array of size. So my first merge here, like four, is arrays of size one to arrays of size. And produces an array. Oh, and merge is equal to two. 
That's at the bottom level. All right? My size two base of four merge twice. The argument size four. Okay. Got two O always O N. So I had four O-N merges where N is two because merge depends on the size of the array that results. Five is to one side eight. So I'm this is an array of size eight. And so I've got one O. So there's interesting symmetry that's emerging here. Two merges where n is equal to 4, which is equivalent to these that I have to do. So at each level, I actually did the amount of work was the size of the entire array. Size eight. Here I did. I've got this backwards. So that's why I can't find the button. Um, here I have two mer four merges of size. It's interesting. What would happen if I in a team? What would this slide look like? Text would be smaller, but how many more levels would I get if I merged an array of size 16? Yeah. Just level, merging into one of size 16. An array of size 16, four levels. About an array of size 2. How many levels would that be? Sure, of these numbers, it's rolling how many those of you that are, whose math skills are front and center here. I can write a simple mathematical expression that will tell me how many different levels of merges I have to do to solve this problem. Yeah, it's log two to the array. Eight. Base two of n, how many levels I have to do? Log base two and levels level does the equivalent total run. comes from the amount of work I do in each merge at every level, and log n is the number of levels. So this is an n log n. Question. This, is, this is tricky. When we talked originally about the complexity classes, I promised you that the log n and n log n complexity frequently arise when we write recursive that n is associated with smaller pieces are roughly the same size. So if I take the problem and I keep breaking it down, another way to think about it, if I take an array of size n, smaller and smaller pieces in half, the number is roughly log n. If it's going to be log base. Three together or whatever, but but it's, that's that's questions about this. Some level this is nice. Remember we what we wanted when we did insertion sort. We said okay, this is O n squared. We want things O n log n. O a, a bound algorithms. A sorting algorithm should be able to perform. 
and regardless of what data I get. So again, this starts to come together. So here's my original array. When I'm done breaking it into pieces, and then at each step, I do a merge. Each step is so I did one step, ON, steps, another ON, and three steps, another ON step. Every step is building, at every step, the size of the sorted array grows by a multiple of two. So when I start, all I have are array, and I have size of two, after two steps, sorted array of size four, after three steps, sorted array of size eight. If I had a big keep going until the by, by two greater than the size of my original, at which point I would the same step is building sorted art. Okay, so let's talk about runtime. So the method here is and what's interesting about merge story? Look at. Let's go back and look at the. No, depend on the date, in the array. When we talked about insertion sort, there were cases where I could break out of the loop a little bit early. If I, here. Next, but this always to execute end step every time. A merge sort function has no dependence on the uh, data in the array either. And so, one of the nice things about merge sort as an algorithm is that it takes data, randomized data. Average or merge. The theoretical uh, maximum, right? So this is as bad as a sorting algorithm should ever do. Or this, it exists. It never does better. One of the problems with merge is that it does not do better than O n log n. It's one of the reasons why you see things like Tim sort that people have developed. already pretty close to being sorted. This doesn't take advantage of this. Merge sort is like, I don't care what you give me, I'm O N log N. Certain cases. But uh, we can sometimes we can the space. Here's where merge Merge sort starts to flow a little bit, which is, and, and we didn't do this in readable. If you're so, this is space. This is not data. This means that in order to sort to work, I need another way of sign. space. So this is the drawback of performance, and it achieves the theoretical best performance. What we don't like about merge sort does any than the theoretical best performance. And if you look at features of the data, and so I need an entire in order to support data. So again, our array that we apply to copies, but if you're clever, you can get away with just one extra array. Okay. 
questions about this before we go on. I wanted to start with both sort of referred to as divide and conquer algorithm. So divide and conquer is a recursive algorithm. So rather than solving a large problem, a problem and keep no small or in divided them until I got to an array of size one, and then I was like, oh wait, those are already sorted. That's awesome. Right? But it's plain print. Divide and conquer uh, in many, many other places, right? Not just algorithm design. You also see this in, in computer system design, search scale system, stuff like that. Very common. Problem, break it into smaller pieces, solve those smaller pieces, and then assemble the results together. So, for example, one of the early, uh, you know, large scale computing programming paradigms was um, at Google was something work for building dividing companies. Matt said, I'm going to I'm going to that will fit a single machine. I'll solve those problems on a bunch of machines and then I have a way of merging all the results together. The map step is the divide step. Reduce is the merging pieces back together. Okay. Now, let's look at quicksort. So quicksort is sorting an algorithm as mainly because it has some interesting. All right. Start point is the same as an array. Walk through how quicksort works. So step, what sort does is it picks value, called the pivot value. And, and the pivot, choice of pivot becomes really important. But for now, let's just you in the Then what step called? I divide the array into values that are smaller than pivot, the pivot, and values Now here's here's what's interesting about this. Here's what happens. particularly just sort or it sort to raise. Okay? So I picked eight as my pivot, and what I've done is I've moved all of the values that are left of eight are large right of the it's still unsorted but I did but with an array of I had to sort and now sort if size 11 Problems are in the way implementing a recursive. Okay? The other thing that's really important to note here is that the the same number as the values that are larger than the pivot. In this case, I had six values that were one that was like a merge store. Where you go in the array. Right. Number one, who wants to propose? Yeah. Actually, 
restart the algorithm on unsorted parts. So now I've got two unsorted parts of my data. I have an unsorted part of size six and an unsorted part of one. And so I'm going to restart quick sort. The pivot always right. So I have always eight will never move again. But I'm going to zoom in reset algorithm on the array I'm choosing a pivot for the right subarray I'm choosing a pivot of 11. Now, the right subarray is pretty much sorted by default. It's an array of size or values that are all pivot to the left, values that are bigger than the pivot. To I have this part of the array still to sort, and this part of the array still to sort. This is done. So at this point, I've, there are three values in the array that are in the right. I'm going to I've got to partition, one for size two. Uh, the one of size two is done immediately, right? I now, again, run the same. Value right three. I'm printed three ready. So I'm finished. Let me see quick, kind of, uh, the third head around. This is working. It, sometimes it seems sort of like the first time you see it. It's like, what? what? The ray is sorted. But is I, if I make the problem smaller in this where, right? I made the problem small. Way that quicksort partitions things using the pivot each other. The determinative eventually end up. And so I have this not only made the smaller, but made independent pieces that I could solve separately. So again, I can start on the left. And again, when I'm done, this array I can sort independently of this array. I know that none of the values here belong over here, and none of the values on the left belong on the right. Because I've done this position. Questions about quick sort? David. Choose the pivot value. When we do this together, we're taking simple choices for the pivot value, like the array or the last. However, when we talk about quick sort pathologies, so unlike merge sort, quick sort in the best Again, you're lurking here. First case, quick word is no better than the reason is you choose a bad pivot value. Again, we're going to come back and talk about this. So, PD page, you'll find like choose. To think sort for real. We're going to do simple things and stuff like that, and we'll kind of laugh at quick sort when it performs poorly and stuff like that. But if you were on real estate, you have to get some level. What's the value that you want to be the pivot? We have discovered, like, quick, 
Why? What do I need to get the median? I know what it is. Why can't I figure out what the median is? What do I have to do to figure out the median? I have the array to find the median value. Okay. Anyway, so start implementing sort with uh, the median. Get any line. Choose the median is going to have to sort the data, right? So you're going to get terrible, terrible performance. Essentially, over and over again. So that's can't. Way people found to try to kind of approximate value when they're using quicksort. So let's look at one single step quicksort. We're going to look at the partition. Because partition is simple. So I want the array that's larger than the pivot and a part that's smaller than so here's how we do this. We go through sixes, and then we go through the value that's smaller than the pivot. What I do is I increase and swap that value that part of the array. We're done. We're going to put the pivot value. What we're going to do is we're going to swap the pivot value into place sense. Yeah. Six my in this case, my pivot, the, the place where I'm putting smaller values is the same value that I'm currently on. So swapping five has no effect, but I leave five in place. Is seven So I don't of the larger part of uh, of the smaller part of the array. I just keep going. If smaller, I swap it with seven. Take three and seven, and I flip them, and then I move the location of where I'm going to swap. The part of the array is it is the swap smaller than the pivot value. No, eleven is bigger, so I keep going. Going one keeping track of where I should swap. I swap with seven. Now, the problem is that the pivot value itself, and so now essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the pivot with this value. So I'm going to take this value, move it here, this value, move it here, and these that were six are on the left. This is a fiendishly tricky piece of it, but it is doable. And that's our algorithm for doing. Should we try it? I guess. Um, I'm my I don't want to partition. Array, I'm actually going to try to get it to partition only a portion of the array, uh, just because I thought that would be more fun. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to save the, the pivot position. We're going to say um, the pivot position is going to start. Then I'm going to go through the rest of the array. So I'm going to say int i is equal to start plus one. I is less than n, I plus plus. So I'm going through the rest of the array. I'm also going to allocate a temporary variable up here. So if, now, a pivot. So I say input array I is less than 
input array pivot start. That's my pivot value. I start in this particular implementation first other than my pivot value, I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase my pivot position to make space in the smaller, and then I'm gonna swap this into place. I'm gonna say temp is equal to input array i, input array i is equal to input array pivot position, and then input array pivot position is equal to temp. Okay. When I'm done, however, there's one last thing I need to do, which is I need to put the pivot. Point I've been just ignoring the pivot value. I can put the pivot value in the right location. Pivot position tells me exactly where that needs to go. So I'm going to say temp is equal to input array pivot position. Input array. So, if, uh, ooh, look at that. Again, this is, um, this is the kind of, you know, stare at a little bit. There, figure out what's going on. You guys will get a chance to do this later this week on one of our homework problems. Um, one of these that is, is good to um, spend a little time familiarizing yourself with. Okay, but well, I, uh, I want to point something out about this, though. Step. Is there, did I have to allocate another array, like I did in merge? Consumed. Memory is consumed by this function. Yeah. So you may be wondering, like, uh, quicksort has where behavior can be dependent on the inputs in a way that's, um, that's bad, that we'll talk about next time. And the reason is it doesn't require any extra space. It did things in the array itself. Okay, so this is a good stopping point for today. We're going to come back and talk about this time. Um, just announce. Quiz that starts.